Denver Mayor Michael Hancock is the first incumbent mayor in this city to face a runoff since 1995. It has only happened three times in the last 40 years. In fact, decriminalizing magic mushrooms got more votes than Mayor Hancock tonight, though the mushroom initiative is still short of passage. Initiative 300, which would repeal the city's camping ban, was overwhelmingly defeated by voters. Let's first look at the number in the mayor's race. As of 8.30, and we're getting new numbers from the city every 90 minutes, Hancock is at 40%. He needs 50% plus one vote to avoid the runoff, so you can tell it is a Herculean task for him to climb out of this position. Jamie Gillis, former head of the Rhino District, is at 27%. Tonight, the mayor congratulated her on joining him in a runoff election, which would be held on June 4th. Nine News political reporter Marshall Zellinger had the chance to speak with both the mayor and Gillis tonight. Kyle, you know, always the salesman, Mayor Michael Hancock, was telling his party here that it's a victory. Although he's got a screen up telling what people can do right now as though he was expecting a runoff. So it's not clear if he just knew after those first 7 o'clock numbers if it was going to be a runoff or if he was expecting it this whole time. He told me in our interview that Denver is moving in the right direction and that the voters know that. And I asked him if it, that were true, wouldn't he be having an absolute 50% plus one victory party right now? We are having a victory party, and the reality is we came out on top. Our goal and commitment is to stay on top, have those conversations, and remind people from how far we've come and where we're going. And if they need to have greater clarity on that for the next 28 days, I'm all ready to give it. Just a mile away from here is where Jamie Gillis is holding her party. And after those initial numbers came out at 7 o'clock, the math started to look like, hey, we might have a runoff and things were going good over there. She was telling me that she's a little shocked by the numbers, but exactly where she thought she'd be. The numbers were solidly right where we had hoped to be. So um, I have to say, obviously, I'm still in shock. I mean. We ran a great campaign. We did the work. I'm really proud of what we've done, but still to see to see that we are in a position to take Mayor Hancock to a runoff is there there still are no no words for that. There's some awkwardness in both parties. Here, I asked the mayor how he can assure his staff and his cabinet that they're going to have a job in more than a month. He said that they're strong and they see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Down the street at Jamie Gillis's party, I asked about the makeup of city council. So far, it only looks like one incumbent right now, Mary Beth Sussman, who represents the kind of just uh, east of Congress Park area and the Hilltop area. She is not in the lead. That could be a runoff. So I asked her if the makeup of the council is the same that supports current Mayor Michael Hancock. How is that going to work with her? She said she has her work cut out for her, Kyle. Boy, and now the conversations begin between the other challengers, Penfield Tate and Lisa Kelderon, who it appears did not make the runoff, whether they will throw their support behind Gillis coalesce against Hancock or whether they will sit things out. We asked them about that in our mayoral debate and a number of them wouldn't commit to backing another challenger. And I even asked Jamie Gillis that and she said the very first phone call she was going to make tonight are to the opponents to say please support me against Mayor Michael Hancock. Coming up in our 930 half hour, we will talk to Nine News political expert James Mejia who finished third in a Denver mayoral election and knows what one of those phone calls sounds like. Marshall, thank you very much.